So we'll get started and we may have a couple panelists that in, um, join us in a little while. Uh, if you want to check out the chat, there are people here who are in various roles. So if you want to check that out, you might find that people are here in, in different ways and for different reasons. Um, so I will be just to make it easier since there's uh, this screen full of names and pictures, which is fantastic. I'll start uh, by calling on people and asking for introductions from, from our panelists for the evening. So can I start with you, Shannon? Would that be okay? Yeah. Um, my name is Shannon Stansfield. Um, I'm a panelist. My husband is not. This is my husband who's here. Um, my connection to Route 91 is I was an attendee that night. I was located on the Malibu hut side of the stage. Um, I'm currently located in Goshen, New York. Uh, we actually traveled there with a couple other people from different states, Florida, Pennsylvania, and California. Um, and I think one of the questions was my immediate reaction at the time um, was disbelief, total disbelief. Um, so, um, but I think that's, that's my introduction. Okay, thank you, Shannon and husband. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> did you have something you wanted to add? No, no, just Wayne. I obviously we were there at the, the concert together. Um, yeah. And just that, that first reaction was kind of the same thing. It was just the disbelief of is this is this for real or is this a dream? You know, just kind of oh. okay. same reaction. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you adding that. Um, Nadine. Hi everybody, um, my name is Nadine. I'm a Vegas local, I live in Henderson. Um, 2017 was my first Route 91 and I went by myself. Um, I was only there on Sunday. Um, someone next to me did not survive and um, after hiding and then attempting to start running across the field, I actually got shot myself um, and nearly died that night. And at the time I arrived at the hospital, um, I was dead due to my injuries and losing too much blood. Um, and they were able to bring me um, back at the ER and I'm here today. And um, to answer the question of my initial reaction, I think it was just shock. I didn't know what was going on, um, how to deal with that. So it was just shock. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing that and for um being willing to talk with us more about your story today. Uh, Jill, would you go next, please? Sure, um, my name is Jill Winter. I also am a router. Um, I was living in San Diego at the time and I've recently moved to Nashville, hence the pile of boxes behind me. Um, I'm also the lead peer mentor for the new peer support program, HEART, that the Resiliency Center um, is kicking off. And we have an info session on later th uh, this coming week, next week. Um, but I think like everybody, um, it was definitely, my first reaction was disbelief. Um, initially I thought possibly fireworks. Um, and then, you know, maybe some sort of gang issue on the strip, but never would have believed that the bullets were coming into the venue towards us. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. Just kind of checking the, appreciate everyone's input in the chat box. So Jared can help me keep track of that too in case there's any important questions there. So of the prepared questions, the first one that we had to start with is what has been your biggest challenge? So, um, They've had a little bit of chance to think about that. So Shannon, would you be willing to share your response? Sure. Um, I, I actually have uh, two. One is resolved and one is still with us to this day. Um, uh, the, the first one was the night of the shooting. Um, my husband actually, uh, we, we escaped and um, one of our friends was still in the venue. Um, and my husband decided to go back in after our friend, um, and there was a lot of guilt with that. And so working through our guilt 
together um, as individuals and then as a couple, um, it took a lot of time. It took a lot of time um, and it, it put a strain on the relationship. Um, I mean, a, not because I felt one way or the other, it's, it was just the guilt of, I should have done this, I shouldn't have done that, or I should have done something better. Um, so that was the, the first um, challenge that we had, but thankfully we've, we've, we've dealt with it. And um, I'm not saying it doesn't pop up from time to time, but it's, it's thankfully with open communication, it, it has resolved for the most part. Um, the other challenge that I have is being in crowded spaces and, and loud noises. Um, I have to constantly tell myself where I am. I have to be present. I have to, um, I, I was telling them uh, a couple days ago that I went to, um, with the group of us, we went to a small venue to go see Morgan Whalen, uh, you know, right after the shooting. And um, I found myself by the exit door. <laughs> so, um, and that still kind of holds true to this day. I might be okay. And then right in the middle of it, it'll just snap and I'll be like, so where are the exits? Um, so that is, that is something that I work on almost all the time. Um, a, sometimes it doesn't bother me. Other times I'm, I'm breathing through it and doing the taps and, and just grounding myself. So I, I would say those are the the two challenges that I've had since the major challenges since, since the event. Okay. So, um, thank you so much for being open about that. And, and with, with husband sitting right there, challenges in the relationship, there were things to work through. Um, you were there together, but you kind of had a different experience of the event. And then, um, that's something that is fortunately within your control and something you guys can work on together. And, but the idea of um, what's going to happen when you're out in public and that there are still going to be loud noises is something that's ongoing that you cannot say, um, excuse me, please, no fireworks this 4th of July. Um, that's, that's not a thing you can do. So, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we did have another panelist join us. So Cindy, I will come around to you and ask for your introduction and your answer to the first question, I'll let you go last, okay? Okay. All right, um, Nadine, how about you? Biggest challenge? Um, my biggest challenge was to admit that I was not okay and not done with it. Um, after all that, um, I always told myself and others that I was fine, and I could handle it, and it was all good. And um, I mean, it, I was in the hospital for about a week and went right back to work the next day when they let me go. Hmm. Um, I went to see my family overseas only like a, a month and a half um, after all of that. I started going back to concerts in December of the same year. Um, I talked about it in therapy for um, like two sessions and I told my therapist I was done with it, over it, and I did not need to talk about it anymore. Um, and I distracted myself with work, with um, volunteering at a local hospital and going to concerts. And I didn't even give myself time to, to really think about it um, and to, to work through it. And I ignored my physical pain and my mental struggles. And um, I had to learn how to listen um, to my mind and my body, listen to when it would told me um, just stop, stop right here. And I had to understand that I was far from being done with it. And that was probably my biggest challenge, not to run away from it, but to, to actually start my healing. Wow, that is, that is huge. Um, because I think that's a normal initial reaction, that denial um, and uh, you know, wishing to say, I've got this, everything's good. And then finally realizing, you know, before I let this really get to me, I need to take care of it. So good job. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Jill, did I ask you already? No, not yet. Okay, I didn't think so. I was like, okay. um, so I have two, two big ones. Um, one was trying to figure out how to pick up the pieces 
and come to terms with not being the same, ever being the same person I was prior to 10.05 on October 1st. Um, that was a really tough one to swallow. Like Nadine, I, I have a really hard time asking for help or telling people I'm not okay. So it's trying to navigate those waters and learn how to accept myself and love the new person I was. Um, and then another one that really still bothers me is sleep. I've been struggling with sleep for three and a half years. Um, and I just, I cannot figure out a way to, to get that to change. So I, I know I've talked to a lot of routers who have been in the same boat, you know, sleep just kind of eludes us and it's, it's not fun. No, definitely not. Cause that's one of the important things that your body really needs yeah. for, for healing, whether it's emotional healing or physical healing or both. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, Cindy, would you give us a brief introduction and answer the, our first question? What has been your biggest challenge? Hi, everybody. Yeah, my name's Cindy and I'm, I live in Michigan. Um, I was not injured physically that evening, um, but I think my two biggest challenges have been residing in Michigan, kind of like feeling as though I live on an island, um, not being able to physically connect with other survivors was really important to me and continues to be really important to me to be part of that community. So um, just feeling, you know, the loneliness of not um, having that um, connection. And um, the other thing is, um, I think, you know, just navigating your life with PTSD and seeing things very differently. And um, my family has not been, my close family has not been very compassionate to my struggles. Um, so that in a nutshell is uh, probably the, the highest um, struggles I've had, the hardest, most difficult struggles anyway. Okay, thank you. So um, things are different and different now for you to navigate. Life was difficult anyway, but now you have to navigate it with PTSD and with the realization that some of your family members are not going to understand and, and maybe give you what you need to help with that. Does that sound? Yeah. Yep, I think they just want the old me back and they don't um, understand why it's not available to me. So a lot of anger there mm. from them. Okay. That sounds like a lot. Thank you to each of you who shared um, a little bit about that. So the next question that we had come up with ahead of time was what has been since that time, what has been your biggest strength that has helped you the most in um, the path that you've been on since that night? And so let's change up the order a little bit, unless you guys would prefer to continue in the same order. We didn't really discuss that, did we? So Jill, would you start with that one? Yeah. Um... I actually think I've become a much stronger person. I've become much more outgoing. I've been able to form much more solid relationships, meaningful relationships. Um, even I, you know, like I said, I had been in San Diego during route, moving out to Nashville. I wasn't sure how it would be um, finding friends and it's been so much easier than I ever could have imagined. But I think part of it is everything that I've learned about myself throughout my healing process because of the, the therapy, um, all the programs to the resiliency center, I did the onsite retreat. Um, I've really learned about me and what I need from me. And that's helped me become a better person overall. Okay. So, uh, the strength to learn more about yourself and what you can use to help you with moving forward. Yeah. That's great, thank you. Um, Shannon, would you be willing to take that question next? Yeah, um, 
you know, I, uh, I've been thinking about this one and it's such, it's, um, it's hard, um, honestly, to think about what my biggest strength is because I, I don't know where it comes from, but, you know, even after that event, um, you know, I got very angry, um, with, with things. And, and I think me as a person, just digging deep and using that anger and turning it into, you know, I, I remember, um, I was saying this the other day that, you know, we had to check back into the hotel, um, to a different hotel afterwards and sitting on the bed and, and, you know, looking at him and saying, um, you know, we're not going to lose each other over this, right? Like this isn't going to happen. And just something in me just got very angry that, that something was taken away that night. I mean, whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, and I think that really fueled my strength. It fueled my like, no, it's no, 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 no. Um, and so I think I just used that to, to build my own strength. Um, I mean, thankfully we built each other up. Um, we have a supportive family. Um, we're actually both in the fire volunteer fire department here in New York, um, but I, I think it, with their help, but also with just somehow taking that inner frustration and just turning it into some sort of pillar of strength. I don't know how I did it, um, but it was that or be extremely destructive. And, and that's just the path I guess I took. Okay. So there was um, some anger that you were able to channel into a useful amount of strength and resolve that you immediately turned to your husband and said, hey, we're going to get through this, right? And kind of made that deal with each other mm -hmm. and then um, kept, kept moving, just kept moving forward. Okay. It's fantastic. Um, Nadine, how would you answer that one? I know we, this was the toughest one when we were preparing. For sure. It took me a while to really think about what my, my biggest strength is or was. Um, but I think that question I would have to answer by giving credit to my new therapist that I found beginning of last year. Because um, that is when I really started the real work and uh, started my own personal healing path. Um, she really listens and understands and is really good at what she's doing. And she taught me how to become mindful and more patient with myself and um, learning how to feel and sit with my emotions is, is really very important when you want to do the, the healing. Um, and my therapist and my best friend are the people that I'm most grateful for because um, they helped me to find my strength again and not to give up. And um, I learned that I don't have to fight all of this um, alone by myself. And I was able to find um, purpose in my life that way. That's great. So you um, found a therapist that was a good fit for you. Um, I like to ask a question and remember all questions are optional, even questions off, off script that come from me. Um, you, that therapist did not fall in your lap, right? Like, there was some work for you to do to decide, I need to find the right therapist, right? Yeah, because the previous one that I had, um, I don't want to say she's bad in general, or she was bad in general, but um, some of the things she told me just straight out hurt me, and I, I did not want to deal with that anymore. Um, and it took me a long time to really find someone that was a good fit. Um, I reached out to the Resiliency Center many times, um, trying to get some attention, uh, um, some help there. Um, and um, I talked to so many people and a lot of them were just not a good fit. And um, I had to be patient and then it finally worked out. That's great that you had the, the self-advocacy to, to do that. And then I guess my other question, which is probably a very obvious one. Um, I know your therapist is now is probably great and doing some really great work, but who's really doing the most work in that relationship? Well, no therapist, no 
it doesn't matter which one you find, uh, your therapist cannot do your work. You have to do it. Absolutely. They can give you some, some stepping stones and, and give you some hints and advice, but the, the main work has to come from you. Yeah, so good job with that. Okay, um, Cindy. What has been your well, I Yeah, I, um, I can piggyback off of what Nadine just said. I had a very challenging experience with a doctor and he, um, the way he spoke to me, the questions he asked were um, really triggering for me. And um, I literally had panic attacks for three days leading up to uh, the appointment with him. And he, he's a psychiatrist. And um, I had um, somebody that I really trusted in my life saying to me, you know, you've got to get away from this situation. And I was reluctant to do so because um, he was kind of, he was an integral part of my treatment. So anyway, actually my trauma specialist said to me, you, this is unacceptable what he's doing and how he's talking to you. So it took some time, like a good year. And I finally got away from him and boy, what a difference. I found another doctor and it's, it's like night and day. And I think just the dogged pursuit of um, mental health and, and resources and finding the right therapists and not giving up and, you know, getting um, fortunate enough to be um, involved in on-site, the on-site foundation, and also the Route 91 um, support group on Wednesdays have been really um, super beneficial to help me connect with others virtually. And I wouldn't have that otherwise living in Michigan. Yeah, and so it sounds like connection is a little bit of a theme of something that's been helpful to everyone. Yes. Even if we have to find it in different ways than you would like to, yeah. Okay. So the next question we had come up with was, what have you done for yourself that has contributed the most to your healing? It's possible that you've already answered this, but if you have something that you would like to add, um, we'll go back and start with Shannon again and see if do you have something you want to add, Shannon, something you've uh, done for yourself. Yeah, I, I would say um, I've, I've been, I, I'm going to echo actually on the therapy thing. I never really went to therapy. Um, I, I didn't real. I just thought Oh, okay, we'll go to therapy. I was open to it. And um, nobody ever told me that the first person you call may or may not work out. Um, and that it seems a little daunting. And it's, you know, you're already fighting this uphill battle. And then you have to fight another uphill battle trying to find the right person. But oh my gosh, when you finally do, it's like Cinderella's slipper. And it and um, I credit my therapist with helping me get through and process a lot. I, I did EMDR. I did um, talking through things. Unfortunately, Route 91 brought up that we just started unpacking the suitcase. Um, but you know what? It was a lot of things, I guess, silver lining. There was a lot of things that I had, um, you know, in EMS and, and fire department, you just, it's okay. You've dealt with it. You've dealt with it. You're all right. You're good. Um, but there was a lot of things that I was able to start unpacking and me as a person I was able to start putting some things into perspective I was starting to put myself first I was starting with my relationships to go you know what wait a minute this isn't what I want um and why am I wasting my time like there's 24 hours in a day I try to sleep for eight of them I don't I usually just watch Instagram but I I you know I have these these relationships, these friends, these jobs, these hobbies. And um, I really started, it started to put things in perspective. And I, I probably, that was the best thing that I could have done for myself was to get the help and then let things start having a new perspective in, in all of this. Okay, 
So you, again, self-advocating and finding the right services or modality or therapist for you. Right. Um, which might have, had you known that, might have saved you a little time in the beginning. <laughs> um, but glad that you were able to, to move forward with that and figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jill, what would you say you've done the, for yourself that has contributed the most to your healing? Um, definitely. I mean, in addition to therapy, on site, the support group through the Resiliency Center, connected with other routers, other routers and other mass shooting survivors. Um, it's so hard for friends and family who were not there to be able to relate to us and understand how we're feeling. And so often they don't understand why we're not over it and connecting with, with other people who, you know, it might've been a different shooting, but they get it. You know, if you're having a bad day, it's not a, oh, why are you having a bad day? Or, you know, why, why does that noise bother you? It's more of a, what can I do to help? You know, how can I help you extend the hand and say, you know, I can't fix it for you, but I can walk alongside you. And I think to me, having people who can, can validate my feelings and understand that has probably been the single biggest thing in addition to the different forms of therapy. Okay. So again, connections. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sharing. Uh, Cindy, how about you? What have you done for yourself that has contributed the most to your healing? Um, I think learning about mindfulness and meditation has been significant for me. Um, self-care in general, and also <laughs> nurturing the healthy relationships in my life and putting boundaries up around the more challenging or toxic relationships. Okay, so uh, setting boundaries and taking care of yourself and learning some new things for ways to take care of yourself. Um, I'm assuming those were new, some things that were new to you or were they things that you re, you brought up again for yourself? You know, they weren't brand new, but I didn't really understand the value um, of them. So I, I get it now and I use them regularly, daily. Okay, great, that's good to know. And Nadine, what have you done for yourself that has contributed the most to your healing? Is there something you want to add? Um, I think I'm no longer hiding my emotions and what happened to me. Um, it's not that I'm walking around telling everybody um, about it, but if someone does ask, um, I can tell at least a very small part of, of my very own story. Um, I am... I invested in my personal healing and made that my main priority. And um, to, to get to that point, I do meditation. I go out on the lake, um, do paddle boarding because um, it helps me to um, become just one with the board in the water. Um, and I can forget everything around me for a while. Um, I volunteer and help others, uh, which gives me so incredibly much. Um, and I recently started writing about my feelings and emotions again, and I share it on social media. And just recently, I also started to um, actually read those, um, those little, I don't wanna call them stories, but my little texts in, in public at a poetry event that um, a local coffee shop has. And I've had so much feedback about that and it's it's really incredible that um, people understand um, and I think I give myself the the time and space that I need to to work through all of the layers of my trauma and um, I think probably the last thing would be that I also got tattoos to cover the scars that I have from that night um, and that really helped me to um, find my self-confidence again which I did not have before. 
Wow, that's great. So writing and sharing your writing and finding time for yourself, finding some time in nature, some mindfulness, and even tattoos. Okay. That's great. Okay, so the, the next question that I have came from a lot of people. For me, I felt like hearing from a lot of people, you know, I, what I, I just wish other people would understand blank. You know, I just wish I could get other people to figure out or I get, wish other people would figure out or, you know, that kind of a statement. So the question is, um, with that being kind of the reason behind the question, but what, what do you most want others to hear or understand from you? And we'll start with Cindy this time. Is that okay, Cindy? Yes, um, I think I would like to convey the message that there's help and there's hope. And you, if you're struggling, you know, there, you can get your joy back. Um, but you do need to reach out and ask for help. Um, the Resiliency Center has been amazing, uh, victims of crime. Um, you know, there's people here that, that care and want to help. So, um, you know, if you find yourself in a dark place, just reach out. Okay, so you don't have to do this alone. Mm -hmm. There, you will find someone that may take a few tries, but you will find someone. And there are some specific places where you know you'll find someone that will at least get you started. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, Jill, how about you? Something that you want others to hear or understand? Um, I think for me, for, for people outside of of the survivor community, it's that this is something that we will live with for the rest of our lives to one, to one degree or another. Um, over time, our healing will make it so that it's not as impactful. But, you know, if people have a broken bone, they can see the cast. You know, once the bone is healed, you don't have the cast on. It's not like that when you have a, a trauma. It's you don't just get over it. It's not just, you know, here and then gone. It's, you know, as, as Shannon said, you know, the large crowds, the noises, the, the sleepless nights, the, you know, the guilt, it's, it's something that's going to always be with us, but we can through a lot of, of, a lot of work, make it so that it's not as impactful on us. Okay. So just let you would like for others to understand this is always gonna be part of who you are mm -hmm. moving forward. And even if someone would like to make that not a thing for you, there's nothing we can do about that. I wish there was. Right, exactly. <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody could figure that out, please, I, I will be the first still in line to try it. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Um, Nadine. Um, something that I want others to other, others to understand and, and hear. Um, I think it's important to understand that there's no universal timeline for healing. Um, everybody heals in their own way and there's no reason whatsoever to compare yourself to others. Um, Cause where I'm at may not be where you are at even though it's been the same time for everybody. Um, and it's okay if you're not okay for a while, but it's important to constantly push forward. That's important. Um, do what you can with the strength that you have available on that day. And if you only make a small step on that day, it's totally fine. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important to understand that there's no shortcut to healing. Um, you won't be able to run away from it. Um, if you try to ignore it, it will hit you like 10 times as hard later when you start to look at it. And you need to slowly unwrap every single layer um, of your trauma in order to heal. Um, we will never um, be able to forget what happened, um, but we can learn how to live with it. But like um, we touched on earlier, um, nobody can do that for you. Um, you have to make that conscious decision yourself. 
um, you can find the best therapist in the world. Um, they cannot do the work for you. You have to do that. Um, and I personally believe that um, one of the main keys is to not make Route 91 your identity. Um, it happened to you, happened to me, happened to all of us, um, but it's not who you are. That's very important. It's not who you are. Do not fill your everyday life with nothing but that night. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying um, get over it. Really not. What I'm saying is don't let it slow you down. Um, and also don't waste your time and energy on trying to make outsiders understand because they won't. Um, you know, they, they probably heard about it on the news when it happened. They maybe thought about it for the next couple of weeks, but they were not personally involved in that. And they moved on with their lives because they decided not to stay stuck in it. And when you find yourself upset because someone else um, from the outside doesn't get you or they're not remembering, ask yourself, what purpose does it really serve me personally to take up all of that energy to be upset about this right now. Um, because you can take that energy and invest it in your personal healing instead. And you will get so much more from that. I think that's that's very important. Those are some really great thoughts, Nadine. Um, there's no timeline. Um, it's okay to start anytime. And it's okay to go forward, backward, sideways, over the hill under the hill, um, all different kinds of ways, as long as you keep keep at it. And yeah, spending your energy on, on trying to get others to understand something that they maybe are not trying that hard to understand anyway, uh, might not be the best way to spend some of your energy. Okay. Shannon, how would you um, answer that one? What do you want others to understand or hear the most? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to echo actually Jill a little bit, um, you know, that we're not the same people, uh, at least some, most of us aren't, um, I, you know, things that wouldn't bother me before, maybe bother me now, um, big, small, whatever. Um, and then there's things that, you know, um, and don't think that I'm totally okay with it either. There's things that, that I'm like, okay, I have to be accepting of this. And then there's other times where, you know, those fireworks go off and I get, I get really mad at myself. I'm like, why am I letting, why am I letting myself get upset about, you know, whatever. And then, um, you know, it, it's, it's an acceptance thing. It's a process thing. Um, and, you know, I just wish people would understand sometimes that, you know, I'm not necessarily happy with it, but I'm trying to be accepting of it. Um, that's probably one of the biggest, biggest things um and that you know it's 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 just different now i don't want it to be different but it but it is so okay yeah that's um absolutely it's when we go through life and become um a culminate culmination of all of our experiences right and so we, we can't decide well i'd like to take this one with me and i'd like to take this one with me and i'd like to not take this one with me um, especially ones that are that big. Um, and then also, you know, our, our minds are built to protect us and our, it creates reactions in our bodies that are meant to protect us. And so that's going to continue to happen with, with certain noises and, you know, things that bring out that protective reaction in our brains. Right. And I would, I would add on to that, the anxiety too. I definitely developed a little okay. bit of anxiety and, and maybe, um, uh, uh, they were, I think, um, I mentioned it the other day. I, I started talking to not a, a logical brain and a, and a, an emotional brain. And sometimes I have that emotional brain and my logical brain is like, you know, it's all right, calm down, eat a Snickers. It's not that bad, <laughs> but you know, I really do think about certain things like that night I wasn't shot, but I did get, have some internal bleeding because of um, the spiked fence over on, I believe it's Giles Street. Um, you know, I, I had some internal bleeding. Well, now the two of us are actually considering children and I'm going through my head like, oh my gosh, did I do something that night 
you know, almost four years ago. Um, and, you know, those are probably obsessive thoughts that I wouldn't have had before. So it's, it's things like that, yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate you sharing that. So the last question that we had uh, in our list is what message of hope do you have for others? Um, let's see. Bill, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I think there's a couple. The The biggest one that I've I've talked to with other survivors of, of various different shootings is none of us is alone. It, it's so so often we feel like we're the only ones going through this, but we actually have a large community of people who are there to support us. Um, and I think that's such so important for us to remember. Um, but the other thing is we are so much stronger than we think we are. Um, I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but if you look at everything that you've overcome in your life, um, we really have a lot of strength. Thank you very much for sharing that. I know that that's true for you and many of the individuals that I've met along, along the way in terms of strength. So um, Nadine, what message of hope do you have for others? Um, well, first and foremost, there is hope for all of us. Um, and you have to fight because the world needs you. And it needs someone who's been strengthened by adversity and, and struggle. And it needs you um, who have been through so much, but still manage to remain kind and, and compassionate. Um, and I think it's important that you use the pain that you've experienced to heal, to help heal others. And you see people giving up every day. And I think it would be helpful to stand up for them. And when everything seems dark, um, choose to be the light for, for others. Let the world see what you can give. Breathe and fight and get up and do it. And I stood up and I enrolled in school this fall. I've become a therapist to help others. And if I can do it, everybody can do it. That's a fantastic message. That's almost a mic drop kind of a message, but uh... Yeah, that's beautiful, Nadine. Um, and and knowing you, I, I appreciate that message from you a lot. So, um, Cindy, what would you say would be your message of hope for others? Well, that's a tough one to follow, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well done, Nadine. Um, I guess I'm just going to kind of piggyback off of what I said in the um, last question. You know, if you're struggling, if you're in a dark place, life doesn't have to be like that. Um, hang in there, um, fight for your recovery. Um, there's hope, there's help. If you find yourself addicted to uh, chemicals or alcohol, um, there's help for that too. So just reach out be vulnerable, be open-minded. And like Nadine said, fight, just keep fighting. It's worth it. Wow, you did a great job following, <laughs> even though that was a tough act to follow for sure. All right, well, Shannon, I guess that leaves you um, having to try and wrap up that last question. What would you add? Um, my message of hope for others, um, I can't take credit for this, but I thought this was great. And um, I think it goes along with the same theme, which is, you know, there is something in you to, to come through on all this. Um, it might seem like an uphill battle at times, but I promise you, if, if you, if you, I mean, there's plenty of resources and when, when it, it, it will fit at some point. I, I promise you it'll fit. It might be a person, it might be a pet, it might be a friend, it might be a therapist, it might be, it, it, you just gotta be open to it. Um, and, and the point that 
I was going to say that I can't take credit for is, you know, this was a, just a puzzle piece in your life. It wasn't the whole puzzle. Um, and it might feel like it's the whole puzzle. And, and trust me, I, I get it. I know, um, you know, not only there for a period of time I was dealing with myself, but I was like making sure that he's okay. Um, and then he's making sure I'm okay. And then we have stuff to work on together. And, you know, it just feels like, my gosh, is it ever going to end? Um, it, it does get better. Um, and I, I, I promise you there's a way to it. And if you ever feel like, you know, you don't know where to start, I, you know, I think about how you can help others, maybe, you know, refocus that energy into something else, you know, um, I, I, there's plenty of things I'm sure, you know, we went back to, to our fire department and we didn't do active duty for a little while, but we did definitely did like, well, a fundraiser, I can do a fundraiser, you know, um, I can do some social media stuff. I can get our community pumped and help, you know, give out, um, you know, whatever it is for the kids this week, you know, and next thing you know, it was that alone, just helping others was contributing to my healing. And so um, there's plenty of organizations, there's plenty of people, there's plenty of dogs, you know, that, that you know, need our help. And um, it was just something that helped me. Um, but I would encourage you to find what makes you feel good and maybe just, just try to get back to that. So between, you know, the, the formal and maybe the informal you know, the social aspect of it, it, I think it helps. That's great. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, it's so nice to hear messages of hope from some of you who have been through so much. And I know that um, each of you that have been willing to share your story with me um, and with others today have, have been a huge inspiration to me. Um, I know I've probably told each of you at some point, you know, whenever we get to have a conversation, you pay it forward in some way, because I learned something that helps me be better uh, at helping others. Um, so I really applaud your willingness to, to share. And um, this is a very great audience. Also, it looks like we have a lot of folks who have joined and have stayed with us and have been um, engaged in the process. So we don't have a lot of time left, but I wonder, um, given again that I always tell panelists, they always have the option of declining any specific question because we don't know for what reason it might not be a good question for them to in taking care of themselves to, to answer. Um, but does anyone on the call uh, or on this meeting have um, a comment or a question that they would like to share after what you've heard from um, Shannon, Nadine, Jill, and Cindy this evening. Does that mean we did a good job? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it does, you know. Sometimes it takes a minute to get off of mute or to type it in chat. Sometimes it means people just really appreciated the opportunity to be here and listen and be with us as we, you know, explore these questions. So, Terry, I actually have something else to share. It's something that my therapist had shared with me. Um, okay. So often we feel like we're doing really good and then something comes back and we feel like we took several steps backwards. And there was one time, um, probably about a year after I made that comment to her and she's like, I don't want you to ever say that again because you are not going back. And I grew up in Colorado as, as is she, so she used a lot of the, the mountain analogies with me, but she's like, think about hiking up one of those 14,000 foot peaks. You're going up and you're gonna hit a valley or a meadow and that's kind of when you think that you are you're doing good and then you kind of hit a stumbling block. And you might be in that for a couple of hours, for a day, for a week. And then eventually you're going to start hiking up again. Then you're going to hit another valley or meadow. You're going to keep on hiking up. When you think that you've gone backwards, if you take a step back and you look at that overall trajectory of that hike, 
you are so much higher up than you were when you started. So don't ever think that you took steps back because you are still way higher. I like that a lot. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Anyone else have a question or a comment? I see a lot and lots of thank yous and appreciation for those who've been willing to share. I just want to add, if I could. Sure. Um, I'm with Cindy. Uh, I think I mentioned, you know, I'm in New York. Uh, Cindy's in Michigan. Um, you know, and so if any of you, maybe, maybe you were local, um, but then you move somewhere else, um, please don't feel like you're on an island. I know it feels like that. We, we experienced that firsthand, but um, you're not alone. And there's definitely, there's definitely groups for that. And I definitely wanted to bring that up because that is a very real feeling. Um, when we came back home to New York and our friends went back home to Pennsylvania and the other friends went back home to Florida, it, it, was, it was like nobody, somebody saw it on the news one time and then that was it. And so um, not only do you deal with that in a normal environment, but dealing with that when these people really have no idea what you went through, um, it's just, just please reach out. There's different groups. Um, and I know Terry knows about it. There, there is an East coast group, literally anything East of the Mississippi, because we're so small, <laughs> but, um, we, we try to at least talk to each other. And because I think it's a different type of isolation that people might feel if, if you've moved away or you're not available to stop by the resiliency center, so. Yeah, thank you for um, bringing that up. I think that trauma is typically um, the type of thing where people feel alone anyway, um, regardless of whether they're around others or not. It's kind of an alone, um, there's just a loneliness to it is what, what I've gathered and what I've been, what I've been told and what I've, observed and to add to that actual loneliness it makes it even harder so um appreciate all of the kudos to the center we have been working very hard to try and make sure that um you know we include as many people as we can as many ideas as we can so hopefully this will also spark maybe a new idea or at least one person to try something different um, we know how important it is to stay connected and the center is definitely still here, still learning and still moving forward and doing what we can to provide what is needed for anyone impacted um, by, by this shooting. So um, really appreciate the panel's time and everyone else's time for, for hanging out with us and um, just spending the evening together, giving us some of your time. Thank you very much, Terry, and um, also to the Resiliency Center for putting this together. Of course, Thank yeah. You so much. Someone had a great idea. We just kind of tried to help make it happen. So, um, yeah, we'd love to hear from anyone who wants to give us any feedback. Um, for, this is kind of our first go at, at this um, as a virtual event, especially. So um, we know we can make improvements, uh, but we also hope that it offered, I, I know that you guys offered a lot of really meaningful, valuable information to, to others, either whether it was new or whether it was a reminder, um, it's always helpful to be sharing that information and not be alone. <laughs>